All right, you guys, I think I got this all worked out. I think we are good to move on forward. All right, as you can see, we're going to move on to our next unit, the Universe and Galaxies. Okay, and basically when we get done with the end of this, it's going to be just like it is in class. You're going to have a complete packet of guided notes, and you'll have all the vocabulary done. So after we get a few PowerPoints into this whole thing, I'll start throwing in the vocabulary at the end of it at the, you know, like the final slide of each uh, of the PowerPoints you watch. And then we'll build that at the same time that we're building our guided notes. So let's get cracking. All right, here is the essential questions we're going to be dealing with through the whole thing. And we've done this in class before. Okay, I want you to pay attention to the uh, top five. Okay, A through E. You see how those are kind of in a, its own little font? Okay, all those have to do with the Big Bang Theory. And just like evolution, let's not be afraid of it. Let's find out what's behind it so that we can make intelligent choices. Okay, um, there's basically four legs that the Big Bang Theory stands on scientifically. You know, much like a dog or a cat, right? We've got four legs. And we'll get to the point where we can identify every one of those. So I'm, I'm going to leave that for later. But basically, we've got, you know, uh, what evidence is used, cosmic background radiation, we'll talk a little bit about dark matter, dark energy. Next, what evidence is used to verify the Big Bang, that's a different topic than A. Okay, and then how does all this evidence make it a durable scientific theory? Okay, so that's like the first third. Now if you look at this slide, you can see that the middle essential questions. They're kind of grayed out. I'm just changing subjects a little bit. We're going to be talking about why things in the universe are organized the way that they are and what is that organization. Okay. You know, what, why is stuff spread out in space the way that it is? That's basically it. You get down to the bottom few, J through N, and it's all exclusively about stars. Not the internal structure. We already dealt with that. Okay. But what cosmologists can tell about stars in the way that we look at them. And then finally, we'll deal with the difference between astronomy and astrology. Okay, so there's that's kind of where we're going with all this. And we'll do that over the next few weeks, whether we continue to do this throughout the year or whether we go back. Well, you know, either way, this is what we're dealing with. Okay, the subject of the Big Bang Theory. It's, it's the most accepted scientific explanation as to how the universe started. That's what it tries to explain. A little bit more right here. And this is our final slide for this PowerPoint. Okay, what is it? Well, it's a scientific theory that states about, you know, 13 to 15 billion. Okay, now you can kind of wrap your brain around billion. Yeah, if you got million, you know, we go up to billion. Okay, 15 billion years ago, that the universe was incredibly hot. And at some moment, everything began to expand like an explosion, but it was not an explosion. That's a misconception. And it continues to expand even now. Now that point that everything seems to have come from, that it's moving away from, Science is going to give it, you know how science is. They're going to give it a, a kind of unique term, a singularity. I was like, what's a singularity? A singularity is a spot in 3D space where something, something happened. <laughs> That's it. That's it right there. Okay. So at this point, you ought to be able to answer number one on your guided notes. We know that the Big Bang is a theory which says about 15, 13 to 15 billion years ago, the universe suddenly we don't like the word explosion. We like expanded. Expanded in all directions from a what? Very bottom. From a singularity. There you go.